Hi, it's so from So's Real Thoughts. Uh, I'm here with my friend Michelle today because I went to Outside Lands last weekend and I bought tickets for Sundance's new festival next weekend for 12 o'clock boys. Uh, this is Martin Bonner and Cutie in the Boxer, but I could not make it. So Michelle went for me and yeah. she's going to be reviewing or giving you a little uh, peace of her mind. Yeah. <laughs> so. Forewarning, I'm not a, a film critic, so my term, terms might be whatever. Okay. Um, so, 12 O'Clock Boys. Yeah, 12 O'Clock Boys was, uh, I think, shot beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it had a lot of potential to be... It looked really interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the, the shots, yeah. yeah. The shots and the, and the trailers were amazing, and it definitely translated over the documentary. I think that story-wise, it could have been a little bit more developed um, as far as uh, it following Pug and Pug being kind of like the gateway into the dirt bike game or whatever. Um, even though it was shot over a three-year span, I think, um, yeah, the story just didn't feel as developed. I don't know what it was. Um, yeah, that's such a shame because it seemed like such a like, promising concept. Yeah, yeah, I think it it gave you what you wanted, but I think it left me wanting a little bit more. Um, I think it also might be the fact that the director, at the time that he was shooting it, he was um, studying painting, not film. So I don't know oh, if, okay. that's, if that's one thing, but I think that's really interesting and really for someone who's studying painting instead of film to go out and do this like documentary, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely worth watching. I, I think like I just wanted a little bit more. Okay. Um, I don't think I'll be watching it anytime soon. Um, <laughs> this is Ma Martin Bonner is one of the films that I just randomly bought because, you know, people at Sundance and AFI said that it was one of the best and it won the audience award so I was like okay why not <laughs> I would normally not go for this type of movie considering it just seems like a very bland uh, storyline of like two men but how was it? Well basically it's, it's what you assumed it was I think um, it's a story about this old guy I probably ain't gonna totally butcher this but I felt like my perspective it was just this old guy who um, was trying to start a different life um, in a culture that he's so used to um, being juxtaposed next to this other guy, you know, uh, that other character that you see in the trailer, um, who is also being put into a situation or a culture where he's not used to. And I think it's just that juxtaposition. It's just a little brief yeah. kind of snippet about two people coming together and how they handle both being in a kind of similar situation in a different context. Um, so it's just like two men having a midlife crisis. Basically, that's yeah. what it felt like. Um, and even, uh, there wasn't that much dialogue. Mm. And I think when a film doesn't have that much dialogue, you need to have so much of, you know, like yeah. there needs to, if they're, if they're gonna talk, then it should have some importance. But I felt like... It left you, did yeah. it leave you uh, dissatisfied? Yeah, I was like falling asleep, oh. honestly. Sorry, I, I don't know. <laughs> Everybody that loved yeah. it was like, what the heck? <laughs> I know, probably. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think the target audience loves. Yeah, I don't think it's not my cup of tea. Maybe it's those people that loved Short Term 12. Yeah. I don't think we'll get that. Um, the, the next film, Cutie and the Boxer, this, this is the one film I was very excited for. Um, and Michelle got to go. Yeah. And well, I went Friday night, which was the opening. Um, all the bags over there, uh, and that the, they had a party the same the same night of the opening weekend, and it was really fun. They had it at oh, shoot CB twenty one CB twelve. What is it? It's at that one structure, and they had it inside the furniture store. So okay. they it was really cool because they turned the whole furniture store into just like an open party. They had okay. trays and. Um, they gave she out got free goodie bags, shirts, um, I like missed snacks, out. bags, Nike bag. Which oh, is like nice. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really chill. And then so after that at party, initial party, we went on to go watch the 10 o'clock screening. Can you box? 
With my boyfriend, who's also an artist, Danny. They're both artists, so it's like two artists watching this love story about two artists. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and you get you got to meet Yushio yeah, and Yoriko. Yeah. I don't know if we did break up the pictures. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I will. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> 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 but yeah, they're so awesome. Um, I mean, we got to hear their Q&A. Yeah. I don't know if you have to, but... Um, I actually got... After I came back from Outside Lens, I was like, I need to watch this film, and it opened at Newark, and so I went on opening day, uh, where the director Zachary Heiserling, Heiserling, <laughs> um, came and did a Q and A, and so it was like, it was so awesome. Yeah, so this is one of the best films. Um, I think they said that the movie was shot like in five. Yeah, over a span of five years. He um, did it on his off time, like on the weekends or like this was his side project because he's um, a cinematographer full time or like whatever doing other projects and you can tell that he is a very like, great cinematographer. Yeah, like, the it's shots so beautiful. were it's so crazy. awesome, like in your face, yeah. so intimate. Um, my colors were on like, The opening on shot is yeah. of um, <coughs> Noriko brushing her hair and it's like, so I was like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think it was definitely a success because the characters themselves, they're so yeah. strong. Yeah. Even though one might seem more timid in the beginning or whatever, I think um, it was kind of like a fail-proof story because of how interesting uh, Yushio and Noriko, Noriko are. Um, and I love how the story develops. It seems like something major really happened within the story and it happened naturally, it wasn't forced or anything. And that's sort of like how I felt. Well, I mean, what, for what really creates a good story, you know, a good character, and you, you see them kind of develop and have a major shift. I actually got to ask Zachary a question. If in the five year span, if he ever got to paint with them, he said, sadly, no, but he got to like punch. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I guess what, uh, like, they used the sound of his punches to like cheat one of the shots. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I thought that was interesting. But it's like, how could you not paint with them the yeah, entire yeah. time? And uh, yeah, I love the premise. It's just like, I feel like it was one of those films that what he intended to make about them, it turned out exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because there were any like surprises or anything it was just this nice like very natural portrait of these two artists really struggling and after they showed the film um Yushu was like oh like, <laughs> really what, what the heck is that like because he wants the focus more on him oh you know? yeah and so yeah, there's yeah. that shift yeah, of, yeah, yeah. uh Noriko becoming that star yeah, yeah. and I like that because she she deserves it no I think that's kind of like well for me I felt like that was the most interesting thing is that um, he probably, the director probably went in with the incentive to yeah. shoot uh, Ushio and, and this big star, but you see this kind of like really strong backbone, Noriko, and um, how she kind of peers off and becomes, yeah, yeah, the, the, the shining light. And, and she, like, even with her gray hair, she looks so young. What the heck? How does she <laughs> look so good? <laughs> I mean, I think just because of the association with Ushio, she like yeah. looks, she like might look older, but she's so. Good. They don't even look like grandparents. Yeah, just, she's she's there's... eighty and he like yeah. is so active. Yeah, I only can dream of being like that. Um, yeah, it's so beautiful. So was it like, because you're watching it with your boyfriend who who is also an artist? Was yeah. it like a very reflective kind of? Yeah, I mean, premonition. It was, it was scary because it really felt like. Uh, we were looking into the future, you know? Um, I mean, I totally saw you guys. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We are kind of like giggling the entire way because we were like, oh my god, that's totally you. Oh my god, yeah. that's totally you. But um, one thing that Danny, Danny and I both realized was kind of, um, you know, they live this life of a true artist and like how most artists kind of idealize being an artist, struggling yeah. in the city, you know, living in this grungy, dingy place and like, you know, really making art and being soulful. But like, um, and like that's, I respect that so much because yeah. that struggle that they go through is so real. Yeah. But I think also for Danny and I, like, it's nice to see that portrait. But like, we want to like elevate. Yeah. You know, like, since we're so we're privileged enough to like have the support of people be like behind us. Um, but yeah, I think is it was so lovely to meet them and like 
really see another kind of like artist couple staying together, being strong and working hard and being true artists. So, I mean, if you guys can go see it, uh, I think they're running for a week at New Arc in LA. So definitely go check it out. I think yeah, this, the first Sundance Next Weekend Festival was pretty much a hit. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm they're, they're a big name. They're going to only get bigger. So yeah, definitely this was a great first year. Anyways, uh, this is Michelle. Hey. Check out her Instagram or website or whatever. She's a great graphic artist. And so thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. Bye.